In this episode of the FXTM educational series, we're going to take a look at answering this question. Why trade the Forex? Now, let's start with liquidity, which is more than just how large the market is, but how actively is it being traded? So to give you a sense of some scale here, the Bank of International Settlements in 2013, they conducted their triennial survey where they looked at trading volume in the Forex as well as other derivatives markets. What they found is that on a daily basis, on average again, there was approximately $5.3 trillion worth of notional value being traded in the foreign exchange. Now let's compare that to the futures market, which trades a little more than $400 billion per day on average at the time, and the New York Stock Exchange that trades a little under $30 billion. So the Forex is orders of magnitude larger than that in total trading volume. Now, what does that actually mean? How does that translate into benefits for individual traders? Well, there's a couple of things. So one is a more liquid market tends to be one in which it's possible to have lower costs. Now that could show up in a couple of forms. So for example, a trader in a really liquid market like this is potentially going to experience lower spreads. So as an example, if a trader were trading with an ECN account with FXTM, well, those spreads may start at zero pips to 0.1 pips, something like that. Uh, we also have a source of costs in most accounts for commissions. Well, in a standard account with FXTM, for example, there are no commissions on those trades. So lower trading costs is a significant advantage to traders, especially those who may be trading very frequently, where those costs can really start to add up. Now, number two, I think is actually related to lower costs, and that is that the market is so liquid and it trades essentially 24 hours by five days a week. Now, I say that it's related to lower costs because time is money. So being more flexible in the amount of time that you spend and when you spend that time engaged in your trades, well, this provides that flexibility so that you can really accommodate your trading to your own uh, schedule. And finally, and I think this one is absolutely critical, in most market conditions, a liquid market is one in which it's more likely to get instant execution on your trades. So it's more likely to be filled, you have a lot more flexibility as to when you trade, and finally, it's lower cost to trade in the Forex. All of these are fairly significant advantages, which come from the fact that the Forex market is so liquid. Now, one of the other characteristics of the Forex is the access to leverage. Now, leverage means that an investor is able to control a fairly large position with a small amount of margin. So, for example, with FXTM, you have a floating leverage amount that can go up to 1 to 1,000. Now, what that means is that with a $100 margin amount, an investor is able to control $100,000 worth of notional value. So, how does this work into an advantage for investors? Well, uh, number one is that it takes a very small price move for an investor to be able to take advantage of a trading opportunity. Now, by the same token, of course, in a, if you're using leverage, a small price move can move against you and cause losses, of course. Now, number two here, the second advantage here, is that an investor is very flexible. So they're able to take advantage of trading opportunities that they might not have been able to take advantage of otherwise because they're able to scale the position to really fit the constraints of their account. Another key factor here is that the fact that the Forex trends. Now, what's great about this is that, uh, for example, unlike the stock market, which tends to crash down, the Forex market is as likely to trend up or to trend down as it is to do either one. So this gives investors a lot of advantages. So for example, an investor, they can buy a position to open and sell it back later to close, or they can sell the position to open if they think that the exchange rate is going to begin to trend lower. So it gives us a lot more opportunities to be able to take advantage of trends because the market can move for extended periods of time in either direction. So here's an example actually of a situation when the European Central Bank was starting to loosen monetary policy at the same time that the Federal Reserve in the US was beginning to threaten to engage in a tightening campaign. So not only to stop monetary easing, but to in fact start raising interest rates. You can see in the chart that the euro to the US dollar exchange rate was already in a fairly strong downtrend 
when the president of the European Central Bank on January 22, 2015, announced that they were going to be expanding their asset purchase program, so expanding monetary easing. At the same time, the Federal Reserve in the U.S. was threatening to not only not conduct further quantitative easing, but actually to tighten monetary policy and start raising interest rates. So the initial reaction was actually fairly negative for the euro, so therefore the exchange rate began to drop a little lower. Now it did bounce to about $1.15 dollars to the euro before dropping again to settle at support near parity actually, just above $1.04 dollars to the euro. The forex market is also unique in its ability to provide opportunities to diversify. Now this can come into play in a couple of different ways. First of all, imagine for instance, uh, regardless of where your domestic market is, let's say that you have investments uh, in stock for instance, it's in another economy. So let's say that a European investor has exposure to US stocks. Well that also means that they have exposure to the strength or weakness of the dollar. So if the dollar were to suddenly start to weaken, well their exposure to those US stocks actually may be impaired by that uh, negative performance on the value of the dollar. So they can hedge against this or diversify against that kind of risk by using the Forex. Now we can also do this to get indirect exposure to other markets as well. So let's say for example that for whatever reason an investor has exposure to the oil market and they're concerned that oil is going to begin to fall. Now there are a number of ways in which they could take advantage of that or try to hedge against it. So in the Forex we have currencies that respond to commodity prices. So here's a good example actually of the reaction that we saw in the Canadian dollar as oil prices began to decline in 2014 through 2015. Starting in July of 2014, the oil market really started to weaken quite a bit. Well, the Canadian dollar is sensitive to the price of oil and we would expect that it should actually fall in value versus the dollar, all else being equal if oil prices are declining, which in fact, as you can see here on this chart, that's what's going on. So if the dollar Canadian dollar pair is trending up, that means that the Canadian dollar is getting weaker relative to the US dollar. Now, as you can see here, the trend was fairly extreme. So we saw a improvement, if you will, in this exchange rate of about 32%. So that was over 3,300 pips to the upside. Well, let's use some easy numbers here. Let's say that the improvement in the value of that exchange rate as the Canadian dollar was falling in value was uh, 3,300 pips total. Well, if each of those pips is worth $10 in a full-size lot, then that means a trader could have theoretically anyway made a profit of $33,000 as the exchange rate began to move to the upside. So this certainly is a good representation of the kinds of opportunities that are available at, to a trader who's trying to take advantage of fluctuations in the commodity market through Forex trading. So let's do a summary of what are the key benefits of trading in the Forex. Well, number one, liquidity. And as I said, remember, this is a nearly a five and a half trillion dollar market on a day to day basis based on numbers that we saw in 2013. And what this does is it gives us access to a market that has the potential to be very low cost. The trading can be extremely efficient in a market like that. Leverage is very flexible. So we have the ability to take advantage of trading opportunities that might otherwise be unavailable to investors. So we can really modify the parameters of a trade to fit your own trading objectives. Trends, the great thing about this is that the Forex market is likely to trend up any particular currency pair as to trend down. So there are a lot of opportunities to take advantage of those times when the market really begins to move in one direction for a long period of time. And then finally, diversification. As I used in the example here with the Canadian dollar and the oil market, investors can not only hedge or get indirect exposure for opportunistic trades, but they can also hedge or try to offset some of the risk that they may be exposed to elsewhere in their portfolio by getting indirect exposure through, or direct exposure as the case may be, through the Forex market.